In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. I'm in the operating theater of the DRK Clinic West End here in Berlin and I'm the guest of Dr. Thilo Jon and we just saw a patient who, who was getting a joint replacement and he was not happy about this because it didn't fill his expectation. How often does this happen? Well actually it's very rare, you know, joint replacement is one of the most successful surgery in the world. No other surgery has the same success rate like joint replacement, so this is very rare, then less 10%. Less than 10% of the patient who yes. complains. Yes. And, and if I would be a patient and I would go for a joint replacement, what should I look for? Yeah, well, first of all, you should look that you go to the right place for the surgery. For example, we have a certification, so every year we have an audit. We have to run through an audit. Every you know, three person coming in and see if we do everything correct. So we have to pull out our, all our data, all our surgery we do. And the most important thing is actually as well that you pick up the right surgeon, that you go to the right place, it's very important. And then that you have the indications, the reason why you need the surgery. So in advanced, you know, if you would come in my outpatient clinic, we would make up the proper diagnosis and then we have to talk about your expectation. It's very important. What are your expectations? Because this is an artificial joint, it's not your own joint. And even your own joint gets problems, you know, you got an osclosis because you have any deficit, whatever. As I already said, deformity, cartilage defect, right. sports injury, whatever, what's the reason that you need surgery. So if we take a look at those models here, you can, you can see this is a knee and um, there's a joint replacement in place. Yes. So, uh, but, but, but you didn't replace all the joints, just parts of it. Yeah. yeah. So just yeah. pull on this tight. Pull like this. Yeah, Oops. Oh dear. Well, oh dear. What did Why I do? I messed it up. Huge implant. <laughs> and if you compare to this, this is much right. smaller. Okay. So I just asked you. Can't be my surprise. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah right. What would you prefer? <laughs> getting this huge implant? Right. Yeah. Or do you want to have trying? to do it with a smaller. I would absolutely go for this, sir. Absolutely. That's the thing I would like. Excellent. Yeah. Now you need the right doctor yeah. who's able to say, okay, this implant is yeah. good for you or you need this implant. Right. And if you pull on both, pull on both. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, hell. Another big thing. Yeah, right. And pull again, okay. pull again. It's yeah, pull right. Again. Yeah. yeah. Look right. this, how big it is. And now compare to these. We just right, yeah. replace the surface like this, much smaller. We replace the tibia, much smaller. Right. And put in, and it's mobile. Dr. Yud, how will these 3D printers assist you in the next years? What we can do is actually buy computer technology, which gives us the possibility, for example, in this case, you have a damage here in the joint line and the patella is running through this area and this is a femur mm -hmm. and this is a joint line and this in this part you have cartilage defect so a lot of patients just have single defects so computer technology would give us the opportunity for example that with a cd scan or whatever we could be able to evaluate exactly the size the shape of the defect and replace this with computer technology and 3D printing, we would be able to get an individual size for the knee with the exact radius, exact radius, and then we have a proper replacement, so which is individual for this single knee. We just saw this operation ongoing, and I just wonder. I think it, it really looks looks very very stressful to the patient to, to yeah. put it in a nice way. So, I, I, is it very hard for them to learn walking again after this kind of surgery? No, not at all. Even if it's working very hard for you because you're not used to see this right. surgery, but the patient is running pain free in very limited time. For example, next day or the day after surgery. So, the most important thing is that it's like a complete composition. You know, we do the surgery, we train the patient that he's able to walk on crutches. So we look on the patient individually. And right now you're not using 3D printers, you're using those kinds of tools, which look really heavy to me, like this here. This is a joint replacement. And yeah, this, yeah, this is a joint replacement. And the colors is just, just size, they code the size? Absolutely. This is the tibia, which you place yeah. in between the femur and the tibia. 
So the color is showing me the different, different sizes. sizes. Right. And then you have it in height and this. Great. Yeah, so if the patient is um, getting up after surgery and starting walking around, and sometimes you will discharge the patient from the hospital, is there anything the patient can do to prolong um, the, the, the years he could use the implant? Yes, of course. For example, you're healthy, you have your own knee, you have a ligament problem, you just go for surgery and we do the repair. But if you have already an artificial joint, for example, like this, where we just are replacing the surface and you're losing, for example, this ligament on the inner side of your knee, it's unstable, so we right. can't leave it. So we have to do a second operation to give you a stable total joint. But set all those high-risk sporting events and sporting things aside, um, you could use the artificial knee as your own knee otherwise. Yeah, if a lock of life depends on parachuting, do it, but I actually not recommend it. Thank you, Dr. Jun, for inviting me into your clinic.